Welcome to Rocket Ship, the podcast where web developers learn the skills and secrets to ship awesome mobile apps. I'm Simon Grimm, creator of Galaxies.dev, and today's guest is Jacek Pudish from Poland, the nation carrying forward the weight of the React Native world. Welcome. <laughs> hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Um, um, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to, to have you. Here. Yeah. Glad to have you. So Jacek is the CTO and co-founder of CodeMask. So we got Callstack, we got uh, what was the app mention, and then we also got CodeMask in Poland. And you're also the creator of UniStyles, which is an, I would say, up and coming styling library for React Native. So we're going to definitely talk about that. Mm -hmm. And on top, uh, Jacek also has a blog on which I found some really interesting pieces um, so I'd love to get into uh, something about the new architecture towards the end of this podcast as well, um, mm -hmm. because things like CodeGen, JSI, uh, Fabric, these things I think aren't really clear to a lot of people. And I think you made a really good description in your blog post. But first of all, I want to give you the space to uh, tell a bit more about yourself. So who are you? What are you doing at CodeMask? And uh, what are you doing in your free time? <laughs> yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, my name is Jacek. Um, I'm a software developer, as almost everyone who listens to this podcast. Um, I have around 10 years of professional experience. And actually, the fun fact is that I started as a .NET developer. <laughs> so I was a backend developer. But uh, my team leader showed me the Angular 1.1. So it was the previous version of Angular, and yeah. for me it was like a blessing. It it totally switched my career from backend to frontend, and later I moved from Angular to React, and then to React Native. Of course, that's like the regular road for a frontend developer. Yeah, um, but that's uh, that's an interesting start. Uh, just one question: Do you know is like .NET still going strong? Uh, at one conference, I met some .NET people. Like, I mean, in the enterprise context, but do you know anything about the community anymore? Well, it's hard to say, but uh, my old colleagues still uh, are focusing on .NET, so I guess uh, everything is fine with .NET. Mm. Um, yeah, apart from that, I'm a CTO uh, of CodeMass. We are a team of uh, 15 developers. Mm -hmm. We are working from the office, like we don't have remote work. Um, what else? And we are trying to, like we are focusing on JavaScript. So uh, let's say you are our client. We are only uh, providing services with JavaScript, Node.js, and so on. So everyone can um, greatly write JavaScript code. Do you do more than just the development? I thought I read something on the CodeMask uh, site that you also do like teach people or uh, is there any other services that uh, that is included with CodeMask? Yeah, actually, uh, that's also a funny story because uh, two or three years ago, I started recording some videos in Polish um, on TikTok. So it was for oh. uh, young, <laughs> yeah, it was for young developers. Cool to cheer them that they can um, get the first job. But as you know, right now we have some kind of small crisis, uh, like uh, we have a lot of uh, junior developers. So uh, as of now, I'm not recording anything new and um, I'm focusing on development on Twitter, on open source. So yeah. I'm curious, did you really think uh, the crisis was the main problem um, or is TikTok also a bad channel? I'm asking because I also in the past tried to use TikTok and there is certainly just like uh, also on Instagram, an audience of developers on, on Instagram and there's an audience of developers on TikTok. But could you could you reach them actually with your content? I found this to be really hard as you need to like, you, you know how the TikTok kids are. You, you basically yeah. have to tell them something fancy in the first two seconds or, or you lost them. So, so did it work for you in that regard? <laughs> It worked. Uh, we actually hired two or three people from TikTok. So for me, it was like unbelievable. Uh, you need to know that TikTok has younger audience. So you need to focus on short videos about, I don't know, cool stuff you created um, as you do with your uh, website and courses. But you need to show them like the, um, the price. 
not li like you, you shouldn't uh, describe everything that you are a developer this is the function i think it's uh, too boring for young people you need to show them like the result yeah I found this to be really, really challenging. So from time to time, I try YouTube shorts and YouTube at the at the moment still has the limit of 60 seconds. Yeah. And just last week, I tried to like describe one React, na React hook because I learned about it and I want, it is so, <laughs> so hard to describe something in 60 seconds. I, I really thought I had like a good recording and it was short and it was like a minute and a half. And I was like, how yeah. can I make this even? It is unbelievable hard to make really, really short content. Just uh, <laughs> want to say this out. Um, so you, you're doing CodeMask, you're the CTO and co-founder, but you're doing, as you said, open source and a lot beyond CodeMask. So um, I came across your blog, which you call React Native Crossroads. I, yeah. First of all, I really like the name, but second, um, why did you start it and, and why, why Crossroads? Yeah, so uh, I started uh, my blog um, two months ago and uh, it's about going beyond the JavaScript because at some point, if you are a React Native developer, you have a pretty solid, solid knowledge about the building like the mobile apps. Um, like uh, I saw your tweet yesterday about uh, Airbnb clone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you can build a great app, but what if there is a special case that you need to use native library or you need to start working on Objective-C, on uh, Kotlin and so on. And I think everyone can agree that at this point, even in 2023, there is no documentation for native libraries like there is. Uh, but it's too simple, like it covers only the basic parts of the new architecture and so on. And for me, it was almost impossible to even start working as a full React developer. By full, I mean native and JavaScript. So I thought that maybe I will share some knowledge. It's not like I know everything. I don't. Um, actually, I learned a lot of stuff during the AppJS Conf workshops one and a half year ago. Um, it was like the solid knowledge from the uh, software mention. Um, and I started to learn like C++, Objective-C. I bought some uh, books from, um, how it's called this uh, popular website? Uh, it's like Objective-C for um, Swift programmers. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you need to gain a lot of knowledge. Yeah, so I'm trying to say that you need to gain a lot of knowledge to even start working with, uh, with the native modules. And still you need to have like the, the hardest part, in my opinion, when it comes to the native modules is the, the connection between JavaScript and uh, Objective-C slash uh, Swift or Kotlin. So I'm trying to explain uh, things the easiest I can. So that was my goal. And I wish um, I had more time, like I was uh, blogging uh, entire September and then I focus on uni styles. So I hope I will be, go back uh, after I release uh, version 2.0 of uni styles. Yeah, I, I hope so as well, because I read through a few of the posts. I think at this point you have like five or six or something, yeah. five, four or five. And they're really great. They go really beyond uh, JavaScript and the boundaries, what you said. Um, you, you're going to read, uh, I'm going to put this in the show note. People can see that there's a lot about C++, uh, which yeah. I'm kind of getting scared because I, I see C++ more often than not being mentioned related to React Native. Is, is that like a, a theme that we should expect for the future as well? Is this a new trend? No, like you need to know that even if you use code gen, there is a C++, but it's hidden from you. So for you, uh, you have like a... Um, a syntactic uh, sh sugar, yeah. So you have like a clean code, like with uh, Expo modules. Uh, you can touch only Swift and uh, Kotlin and that's all. But uh, there is another approach that you won't use anything from the React Native code gen or Expo modules. And then you need to write everything in C++. 
And that's actually my approach for uni styles too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get into uni styles in a sec, definitely. Um, I just noticed because uh, I had Mark Rosavi on the podcast before, and as you know, with React Native Vision Camera, there's also a lot of C++ going on. And I started actually when I was uh, really young with C++. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to figure out if, if my skills from 20 years ago will become something I, I, I can reuse again <laughs> with React Native. I don't it know. It might be but... hard, but you, but you just need to jump into the code and try to code something. It, it will be easier. Yeah, I want to get back to that definitely uh, in a second. And um, so I want to later talk about the React Native bridged um, tutorial you put out or in general, the new architecture and uni styles before that. But uh, I just want to quickly know, I noticed on the blog to wrap this up, uh, it's built with Astro. Right? Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. So why we did you pick Astro? Astro. Uh, I think it's a great piece of tool. Um, we like we can still use JavaScript, so for me, like it's a it's a perfect technology to build a blog. And uh, at the past, we are we were using Gatsby and mm -hmm. Next.js, but we just uh, gave a try for Astro, and I think the overall experience was great. Uh, I even used um, these uh, transitions, like layout animations, mm -hmm. uh, in the blog, but uh, I saw some kind of issues with uh, longer posts. Like uh, it's enabled for the uh, blog cover, uh, but for the longest post, I think it was the part two of the um, bridging. Uh, it's laggy, so yeah, but it's still in uh, alpha or beta. Yeah, I just noticed it as well when it loads. It looks really good on the other pages and it's it's usually pretty fast, so I definitely vote for Astro as well. I do actually don't have new projects right now. Did I use it somewhere? No, I don't think so. Apparently not, but I, I really, I'm a big fan of it as well. Um, so yeah, it, it looks great. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Um, the fun but... fact is that uh, I spent like one week to write the plugin for the code editor. Like <laughs> it's custom made with the blur and divs and so on. So yeah, it was also oh, yeah, pretty I, I fun. I wanted to ask yeah. about this. I saw this in one in one uh, code snippet. So everyone listening, it's it's hard to describe this, but you know the code snippets in in coding tutorials. Like you have the listings and then you have the line numbers. But in some, there's actually a blur over some some lines. Like I I was thinking this was some sort of <laughs> privacy thing. But um, what is this? Why did you add it? It's like let's say uh. We are focusing on some kind of file or on a single code snippet, and I would like to, you as a reader to focus on specific part of the code snippet. So that's why I use Blur. Uh, yeah, this is great. I haven't seen this anywhere else before. Really, this is really great. I hope this makes its way into like other libraries. This Maybe is, I, I will love also it. open source it uh, <laughs> with the Unistyle to blog or um, documentation. Right, we we have dropped that name so many times. So yeah. Unistyles is what 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 brought me or what got my attention. Um, Unistyles is currently I looked it up the uh, trending package number two on the React Native directory. I think you even were on place one for a yeah. while. So let's start with the basics. Um, why did you create yet another styling library for React Native? <laughs> I think the story is boring and uh, <laughs> it's the same story. We had a project. Uh, it was a very large project when it comes to the number of screens. And the client uh, asked us to uh, create a web, uh, web page for the, like, for the running business. And there was one uh, like thing that we need to keep in mind that he also would like to in the future um, use the same website for the mobile. So for me, it was easy to just pick a monorepo, yeah? yeah. But uh, we started it last year and um, I did like a quick uh, ch check in the internet, like what options do we have? And of course we have Gluestack, we have Tamagui and so on. But as far as I know, when I tried Tamagui, it has like, a, it, it had like a beta or alpha support for the mobile. So for me, it was a no-go uh, at the point. And also um, this project was custom designed like with a team of graphics. So it was hard to use the UI kit library mm -hmm. and so on. So I didn't find like a clean, fast solution to simply use style sheet 
and make it work uh, with the media queries, breakpoints, teams, and so on. So that's how uh, it started. Uh, I scratched the first version. Uh, I remember that uh, it had a lot of issues with the TypeScript. Like the TypeScript was the hardest part. Um, with the like version 1.5 uh, in the client project, I, re I rewrote it one more time. I added better types. I added a few utilities and so on, but still it was impossible like to extract it from the project because uh, there was no way to pass the types from the, I don't know, your project, your, you as a mm -hmm. developer, you couldn't pass the types. So um, after we finished the project, uh, I just uh, extracted the, um, the core. I like m tried to move it to something uh, that we can share with other developers. So you can actually right now pass your types and it will dynamically hint you in the style sheet and so on. So like that's the base story, but the version that's uh, currently on GitHub is slightly different than the version, like the initial version. So I'm glad the community helps with some edge cases, uh, with some hints, with some, uh, yeah, like everything. So I'm glad that we have like I have uh, like a small community um, that's validating my uh, ideas or finding some problems with the library. Yeah, so I, I found Juni styles to be really interesting. I mean, at first I thought like, okay, we have, I don't know, React Native Paper and Tamagui and Glue Stack and Native Base and everything that also came before. But then I looked closer at, at Uni styles and it kind of made sense for me. Because from, from what I've seen, you, you can co correct me if I say anything wrong about uni styles, but it looks like it is pretty much just a drop-in replacement for style sheets. So instead of saying stylesheet.create, I can just say create styles, import that from, from uni styles, and it just works. Is it, is it that easy? Yes, it's that easy. So uh, even in version 2.0, uh, I'm exporting simply create style sheet as a replacement for styles, uh, style sheet uh, create. And I'm also uh, exporting one more hook because without the hook, it's hard to like um, compute the media queries, breakpoints and so on. Um, but what's more important, I think the, um, I'm proud of version 2.0 because uh, it's using C++ bindings and it will be even faster. I don't know if uh, like that's the requirement for some projects, but uh, in the branch 2.0, if you build the view with Unistyles 2.0, uh, with in initialization of the library, it takes like three to four milliseconds. So it's like uh, instant, yeah, it, it's like rapid. Mm -hmm. I, I, one question, when, when we talk about times here, is this the build time like affecting the build time when I build my app, or is it the time that it takes to load the screen that is using uni styles? With uni styles, I don't have like a custom compiler. It's like a runtime library, so everything happens when you open the app. Okay, yeah, good. So I just wanted to, because sometimes like uh, Vite or any tool is saying, oh, we're like 10 times faster. And then I'm, I don't care about my build time. My build yeah. time is 10 seconds. I don't know if it's like 0 0.5 seconds faster, but if it's about runtime and, and making loading of pages faster, then yeah. Uh, and you said, I think that uh, you measured this and it is pretty much the same time like using React Native style sheet or it, it comes close to it. Yeah, it looked great for the version 1.0. Uh, actually, it's like three seconds uh, slower than the style sheet. But with the initial um, benchmarks for branch 2.0, it's like one milliseconds of difference. So. For me, it's like the replacement for the style sheet, and you can use breakpoints, media queries, variants, teams, colors, whatever you want. Right, right, right. So yeah, so far we only said um, that that we can use, we can just replace style sheet with uh, create styles. Um, yeah. What what are the advantages? Um, can I just drop like an like CSS object from the web into this? Would that work uh, if I did like if I had the right form of TypeScript? Actually, that's the other way. So from the style sheet, we can construct for you a class, a CSS class or CSS inline style. Actually, it's done by the React Native Web. 
uh, underneath. So if you are using monorepo, um, it's done automatically. Um, what you can do with the uinstance is you can simply replace the stylesheet dot create with create units, uh, create stylesheet, and it will work exactly the same. Plus, right now you have option to extend your styles, and what does it mean? It means that every key like flex, uh, flex direction, I don't know, width, height, and so on, it can be changed the value from the number or string to object. And if you pass object, right now you have a perfect TypeScript hints about your breakpoints that you defined earlier with the, in, while we were initializing the library, or you can use uh, web-like media queries, you can use your team and so on. So I'm not changing the structure, how you wrote your uh, styles. You can simply use more features. Yeah, this looks really great. I'm just looking at a code snippet where it says flex direction. And then we got an object with XS column SM row. So this would actually uh, work as I expect. Uh, if I compile this as a web version and, and change the window size of the browser, it would work just like that. Yes, correctly, yeah. Ah, nice. Does does this like these breakpoints or do these breakpoints also work um, if I use this for let's say tablet application? Because I know on tablets, uh, if you change them from from portrait to landscape, a lot can change sometimes. So would it work in those cases as well? Yes, it will re-render uh, when the breakpoint will change. So it's computed with the width and height, and it will also re-render when you change the theme like you will pass a new team. So that's the only two conditions uh, when your style sheets will be re-rendered. Um, so that's like the um, great use case. If you create mobile app uh, for phones and tablets, uh, you will immediately get a working version for web because it will scale automatically. Uh, I really like that. So we can also create our own theme and access the theme in the style sheet that's listed as one of your the features. Um, uh, yes, that is amazing. And I mean, and that's the only type where when I used any because like <laughs> I don't care what you will pass. It just must be an object. It it, it may have colors, some kind of variants, tokens, margins, whatever you want. Yeah, I'm just simply passing it uh, further to the style sheets, to the use styles hook. And in version 2.0, uh, it's even using C++ to simply pass it without the React context. So I think it will be even like better option for the projects than version 1.0. I still have so such a hard time picturing where exactly in the in the chain like C++ happens because as a web developer we have these build tools and whatnot and bundler but I never really thought about C++ but maybe we can get into that when we when you yeah, talk about sure. the bridge as well um so I just have to say that I really like this and and I really like this when I looked at it the first time the main reason for me is that I'm not a huge fan of Let's use native base as an example. Nothing bad about native base, but just putting all of these stack, why something, components and properties into my view, it just makes the React Native application so so hard coupled to this particular library. Let's say I want to switch from, I don't know, native base to Tamagui and I have all these custom things in my components. It will take me like a month to refactor this. And to be honest, for most of my tutorials, I just decided that, well, the the common thing is that people will use style sheet. That's the easiest thing they understand. Maybe yes. they can adopt it if they use Tamagui or if they use a different library, but I will just go with style sheet. So as this is pretty much a drop in replacement for style sheet, there would actually be no problem for me to use uni styles in my videos. It would just add more features and with what features, I mean, theme, uh, the media queries and breakpoints and, and accessing the hook, but it's so, undestructive uh, and I think this this is probably what you wanted to achieve with the library in the first place right yeah that was my goal uh, actually I used native base back in 2017 uh, I was like a junior in react native for me it was a blessing because uh, as a junior developer you are not able to create some harder stuff like parallax mm. effect or 
you just know what is a scroll view, view and text. So native base, uh, native base was a blessing. But later, uh, while I was creating more and more projects, um, like the the fact is that you are using custom design um, designs. Yeah. So you have a team of graphic uh, of graphics that uh, and they creating a design for you. So it's hard to use native base or glue stack or or anything else like the UI kit library. So that's why that was my first um, like fact that I kept in my mind to don't create like the UI kit library. And there's a second thing like what if I don't want to, to pollute your uh, components with my boxes um, or some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, uh, abstraction of the views. So for me, it was obvious that I need to create some small wrapper on top of style sheet and you can just drop it and that's all. I, if you just, if you want to move from the uni styles, you can go back to the uh, style sheet with just simply refactoring the one uh, object and that's all. I see that you, you also have an interesting syntax with like W and brackets and, and specifying arbitrary values in there. This looks a bit like a uh, tailwind to me. Uh, just uh, like like a question, would in the future be some kind of tailwind be possible with uni styles or would this be like a, a totally different? I mean, we have native wind as well where Mark Lawler is working on, but would this be something that could eventually work with uni styles as well? Um. Like, that's not my goal. Um, what I'm trying to do is to extract this like um, media query-like language to real media queries. Right now, it's just a dynamic style on your uh, HTML components. Uh, so I, I don't like it, uh, but uh, with the new version of React Native Web and with a few tweaks, I will be able to simply um, move um, these uh, media queries uh, logic to real media queries in the CSS. So that's my end goal. I'm not sure if I will be able to develop it in version 2.0, uh, but that's my goal. And I think you should use native uh, wind if you like to use uh, tailwind. Uh, it's like um, greatly integrated with the uh, uh, tailwind. Uh, I even use Tailwind for my blog, so uh, it's a great piece of technology. I think that Unistyles is simply another approach. So it's like yet another styling library, but it uh, it has uh, another advantages. It's uh, fast. Uh, you can drop it with, uh, like replace it with the style sheet and so on. And Native Wind is something else that you can uh, consider while you are building your app. Yeah, I think... Um... Maybe wrapping it up, you could say as your marketing line, uni styles is a style sheet uh, on steroids or something like that. That could be your your, your headline yes. for, for for uni styles in the future. <laughs> style sheet 2.0 on steroids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is I there agree. anything else beyond uh, the C plus plus and the performance gains uh, in version 2.0 that's that's standing out to you? That's an improvement over version one. Yeah. So I have a lot of improvements. Um, Actually, uh, I think it's great to mention how the C++ works right now. So imagine that you can inject anything to your window. So if you type window dot something, it can be a C++ object. So with that approach, uh, I can inject a lot of information to the window slash global because in React Native we have global. So let's say you can type window dot unistyles.screen height. So we will get like the value from the C++, which is uh, auto-updated by me. But whenever you access this value, it will be always like the updated one. Also, you can access the team name, the break, the current breakpoint, and many other stuff. So instead of injecting more stuff to the use styles hook and to the create style sheet, you can simply at runtime access whatever you want. So that's the first advantage. And the other advantage is that you can reconsider every algorithm in the Unistyle score. Like you, I can compute the breakpoints, um, I mean by compute, if you pass the key value pairs of your breakpoints, like 
extra small is zero, large is 1000 and so on. I'm um, trying to like think up front that you um, like you didn't sort the uh, object or you use like the different uh, values or you duplicated the values. So I'm trying to sort it, um, convert it to array to be easily accessed later. So I'm doing it beforehand. So that's why uh, I'm not doing it on every um, style access because it would take time. I'm just trying to move things uh, smarter to compute something only once. And I think there is a lot of um, space uh, in the Unistyles 2.0 that I, I can also improve. But at this point, like it doesn't matter. It's like one millisecond or two milliseconds. So I think no one will even like take a notice that it's uh, faster. Yeah, I think yeah. If we're in 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 that area of milliseconds, I don't think anyone would care. Um, and I, I'm still fascinated by. I mean, not just that you're writing C++ in today's world <laughs> as, as a usually web developer. I mean, you have a, a .NET background, but I don't think that helps with C++, right? That's a totally different game. Um, uh, in Poland, uh, we must learn C++ during the university. So, yeah, that's how I know the C++. <laughs> No, never everything makes sense why, why Poland is carrying forward React yeah. Native and, and why everyone's talking about C++. <laughs> you must learn it. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, we should adopt this here in, in Germany yeah. as well. We I think C++ also... is a great language. It's hard. Um, it's hard. I think Rust is also a better uh, approach nowadays, but still, C++ is C++. If you know it, you can code in JavaScript, .NET, um, whatever language you want. Yeah, I wonder why, why like in the background of React Native Vision Camera or or UniStyles now, why why there's C plus plus used and not Rust, which is also very like getting a lot of hype over the last years. Was C plus plus just earlier and covered that spot, or is it technically not possible to have Rust in that place? I think it's possible. I think uh, Oscar Franco created like the um, proof of concept of Rust with React Native, like he was able to call Rust function from the React Native. Um, I think the reason is that just uh, Facebook slash um, Meta used C++ internally, and that's how it works. But it's possible to use Rust. Interesting, interesting. So uh, as you can hear, we're moving closer into native land, uh, which is yeah. the perfect opportunity to talk about the React Native bridge. So just wrapping up, well, the, the link for uni styles are or will be in the show notes. Um, everyone go check it out. It's it's currently a trending repository. Uh, it has about two, not 300 stars, which is a good start. Um, so I'm looking forward to version two of uni styles and uh, definitely will give it a try. But you also had a really great piece, actually a two-part um, series on your blog that I can recommend to really everyone who wants to understand more how modules uh, work. Uh, maybe we just start here with React Native Bridge uh, and the part one. And um, maybe you can just describe what's actually happening with modules under the hood in the first place for, for everyone who hasn't used or has just used modules with React Native but doesn't know about Objective-C, Swift, Kotlin. Sure. Um, so let's say you would like to extend your application to use some native functionality. Um, before React Native 0.68 or 7, I guess, you had to use the old architecture. And all architecture uh, has also another name. It's called paper, paper architecture. Mm -hmm. And everything was great with this architecture. Like we have tons of libraries created by the community, by the Facebook and like everyone. Um, the problem is that uh, when you try to um, communicate from the JavaScript to Objective-C or Java, um, first of all, uh, bridge needs to serialize your message. Let's uh, call it message. Mm -hmm. And when you, if you would like to pass uh, with this message some kind of payload, then it's uh, also like converted to JSON. And later on the native side, it's uh, unwrapped. Uh, everything is uh, computed one more time. And uh, to send it back to JavaScript, you need to convert it one more time. Okay, and it's not like paper architecture is uh, async. It can be sync, 
but you need to keep in mind that uh, it will take additional time for this JSON parsing uh, twice. Uh, so you, you can use uh, synchronous functions. Uh, I'm even using syn synchronous function in Unistars 2.0. I'm using the paper architecture, but it will also work for the new architecture. And the new architecture is um, like the architecture created like two years ago or three years ago. It was published with 0.68. It was like the broader message that you can use it. Um, and the difference it, uh, is that you can use right now C++. So the first approach, as I mentioned before, is that you can inject something to global object. So it's like a host object. It's like the, the name host object is like C++ object. Or you can use code gen. It's like a build uh, step process of uh, converting your TypeScript slash flow types into the actual like the bridge between your JavaScript and your Objective-C code. And if you use CodeGen, you can simply like uh, implement only the functions. So if you have a function hello world and you um, create a TypeScript type for this function, CodeGen will create C++ binding, bindings for you, and you are only like uh, required to uh, to code actually the, this uh, function hello world. You don't need to care about like the bridge, the conversion of types, and so on. So if you don't want to use C++, it's possible. Okay. So yeah. So so idiot question here. Is it like is can I imagine CodeGen is pretty much like how how I would transpile or how the transpilation of a TypeScript file to a JavaScript file works, only that CodeGen takes a, a TypeScript interface and then generates a C++ file. Is it really like Correct, I run yeah. or in the background CodeGen runs on this file and it converts it to this file? Yes. Actually, you need to just create a special file because it won't work for your like React Native project. You need to... Um, prefix your file name with, for example, native and uh, pass the path to this file to the in the packet JSON and it will generate for you for iOS Objective-C and C++ bindings and for the um, Android part, I think it's still Java uh, but maybe in the future it will be Kotlin um, plus C++ bindings so you don't need to do anything you, you just need to simply implement the function and that's all before we move further uh, along the chain, I just have one question regarding Expo because I'm a big fan of Expo and I just did a little course on, on Expo modules, which felt really good to create them with Swift and Kotlin. And next to the plugin, I have this index.ts file, which pretty much describes my function. So if I have a function in Swift and Kotlin implemented, I would also have like the TypeScript interface in this index.ts file. Now, my two questions are, first of all, is that the file that would be uh, converted with CodeGen to C++? And the second question is, does this new uh, architecture already work with Expo or is Expo still doing the old stuff? Do you know about that? Okay, so I've never tried uh, Expo modules, but uh, I was just checking the documentation and I think they nailed it. Like they created the best approach for the native modules. Um, right now I'm using like the bare React Native native module, which is Objective-C, because right now you can't use just uh, Swift uh, without some kind of Objective-C layer, um, but they did it. Uh, they like created for you great API and then where you can use Swift and Kotlin. And the only disadvantage of this approach is that I can't use C++. And for me, like for Unistyles, it was like the requirement. But if you'd like to create a native module, I would definitely go with uh, Expo. Mm. Yeah, I found this to be really easy. I mean, there's actually not a whole lot of content out there about um, Expo native modules. I mean, there is the documentation by Expo itself, but beyond that, there's not a lot. So for everyone checking this out, there should be at this point a new course on Galaxies about native modules with Expo because I found this to be um, actually not too hard. Um, with, yeah. with, with ChatGPT, I was able to figure out the, the right Swift and Kotlin code. <laughs> Simon, I think it's like, it's not that hard. Like it's hard, but it's not that hard. If you try to build your first library, it will be hard, 
but uh, later if you like uh, go from bare react native native module to expo it will be better experience and you will understand everything but you need to try I also heard that for um, React Native, I don't know if you retweeted this, there's actually a proposal now to use a script to create like the bare version of a um, React Native module. Uh, maybe oh, this is, nice. yeah, I think this might make its way into some React Native packages. So it becomes also hopefully easier in the future to create um, React Native modules without Expo. But, but I agree with Expo, it's, it's really easy. But, um, React Native Bridge. So, okay, I, I understand code gen at this point and, and C++. What, what comes next? So the new architecture, things I hear about it as well are Turbo modules or, or JSI and Fabric. So um, hope you can <laughs> help me and enlighten me in those areas as well. Sure. So as I mentioned, we had a paper architecture and the new architecture is called Fabric arch uh, Architecture. And the problem with fabric architecture is that we need to support paper architecture and fabric architecture. If you create a library that's only fabric uh, enabled, like it won't work um, for the other projects that are running paper architecture. So that's the first disadvantage of the new architecture. Um, so we have, uh, we have a code gen, so you just need to generate your, from your TypeScript or flow types, everything for you and we have these turbo modules which is actually c++ modules but it's also underneath the code gen so if you are using code gen you are using turbo modules and the last approach is something called jsi so jsi is a javascript interface uh, what it means it means that you can uh, create you can construct functions javascript functions javascript objects JavaScript values in Objective C++ or in uh, C++, yeah? So imagine that you have interface to uh, create a function in Objective C++ or we can refer to it uh, Objective C code and you can inject it to your global object. So, um, and this function is totally like built in the native world. So that's JSI. You can communicate or create, construct JavaScript from the native world. And that's the fastest approach that you can use right now. And that's why I'm using it with uh, Unistars 2.0. Okay, now I'm, I'm trying to, to bridge my own knowledge gap here. Is this now, what you just described about JSI, what I see in my code when I use reanimated and type use worklet above the code snippet? Yes, so uh, re reanimated. Uh, so if you use use shared value, I'm sure you are familiar with this yeah. hook. Actually, uh, your value is moved to the C++. So it lives in the C++ world. So if you update it, uh, like your component won't re-render because the value is stored somewhere else. It's like use ref. It won't re-render your component if you change it. So reanimated is like the first library uh, that I checked that used uh, C++ underneath. And these bindings are called JSI, JavaScript interface. Yeah, it, these bindings are created by the Facebook. Uh, so there is a, actually you need to include your, uh, the header is called J JSI header file in your Objective-C++ and you can simply like uh, construct values, strings, functions. You can even throw errors from the Objective-C and it will appear as like a regular JavaScript error in your uh, console. Yeah, I found this always to be fascinating with reanimated, <laughs> yes. definitely. Okay, um, so one thing, you, you said turbo modules is just basically stuff that happens in the background. So is yeah. the actual... Swift or Objective-C and Java Kotlin code that I have to write for a native module pretty much still the same, no matter if I target paper architecture or the new fabric architecture? Yeah, so the internals of your, let's say, class in Objective-C or Kotlin is uh, the same. You just need to extend another interface or another class. Uh, and if this class uh, conforms to Turbo module, uh, it has an additional properties and so on, and you can now re register this 
class slash module uh, with the new bridge. Okay, so that that's like the only fancy names. Apart from that, uh, you should reconsider like changing your functions from async to sync because if something is uh, async, uh, it it still is uh, async in new architecture. But if something is uh, synchronous, you can basically switch your function from uh, async to sync in the new architecture. Yeah, which is definitely an improvement. Um, yeah. I just saw it in, in, in your code examples as well. Wow, uh, this this revealed so much. And then I think the last 10 minutes, I, I'm probably going to listen to them uh, three times because you, you really dropped a lot of knowledge in those 10 minutes. Did we leave out anything else about uh, code gen, fabric, the new architecture? Is there anything else that you think we should also mention or add to what we already said? Yes, yes. There is also one other side of native architecture because you can create native module, which is like something without the view. So let's say you want to uh, target your haptic engine on iOS device. So it has no view. You, you just need to call the function. But you can also create or construct native views. So that's the new thing. Uh, like the new, you, you, you could also do that in the paper architecture, but with, but with the new architecture and the React Native 073, you will be able to um, like reduce the number of files, the boilerplate. Uh, it was announced during the React Native EU by the meta. Uh, you can actually like keep uh, your view in one single file. Uh, previously, it was two files. You had to create your like view manager to manage your properties and so on. And right now, it's also moved to the code gen. So um, I think Facebook slash Meta is trying to uh, make easier API for uh, new developers, and I think it's great. Like uh, for me, JSI is the the best part of the new architecture. Uh, but I, I was also using the code gen for my other uh, open source libraries. It was just a test to uh, check how it works. And to be honest, it's, it's great. Uh, I like this approach. Um, some people say that generation of code is not that good. Uh, but still, if you would like to create the same functionality with C++, it, will, it would be harder than simply generate the files for you. Yeah, I assume. Uh, I mean, there are going to be some C++ experts who can definitely do it better. But for, for most of us, uh, yeah, this code gen is probably better. And just to add to the um, view feature you just mentioned, I actually use that with Expo modules as well. Uh, in Expo modules, you also have to like, I don't know if I would call this declare, but you're going to have like, they, they have a strange syntax, to be honest, in, in their Swift files. I, I feel like this a expo special syntax at least it, it looks to me like that um where i also have to like declare the view and then i have the view in another file and then that view i can actually use uh swift and create my ui view and label and and that part was fun uh but the forehead part of of having the view and also passing props to that view or any kind of information that was oh, kind of strange um I don't, I, I'm still not sure if is this now using also JSI or how what what is like my easiest way to to test out JSI and just see that I can in a synchronous way call code from JavaScript in in Swift or Kotlin. Is there like an easy way to do this, or uh, I assume I, I have to do a full native Turbo module in that case? Uh, on the JavaScript side, you just need to call global dot and the name of your C++ uh, object. Uh, or simply call JavaScript uh, function constructed in JSI on the native world. On the native side, you need to create a regular um, native module as you would create for the, any other uh, library. And uh, you just need to call a single function to attach the functions, attach the values um, to your global object. So it's like kind of um, similar, but you need to uh, take a different approach. You need to construct your JavaScript objects functions and just push it or register it with a global object. And there okay. is no easy way to, to do that. <laughs> like I, I didn't find like a, a documentation for the JSI. Uh, I was just using the materials from the AppJS workshop 
where I have like the, um, the mind map of what should I do if I have a number, then I need to convert it to C++ number and so on. So it's, it's super uh, helpful. Yeah, which brings us back to the beginning of this podcast that the nation of Poland is once again carrying <laughs> the, the weight of the React Native world. I have just one last question simply because I just saw it on your, your blog. What is the, the file extension .mm? I see an Apple sign, but I know Swift and I know the .h header file, but what is .mm? So if you open the uh, iOS project in Xcode, you should see .m file, which is Objective-C. Right. But if you change the extension to mm, it means that you can right now mix C++ with Objective-C. So it's called Objective-C++. Uh, yeah. It's, All right. it's uh, fascinating how you can mix C++ with Objective-C. Is this something Apple added or is this like a special thing from, from Meta or am I? No, it's from Apple. Like okay. um, Objective C is also like the language from the C family. So we have C, C plus plus, and we have Objective C. So they create um, they created like the some kind of bridging between C plus plus and Objective C. So you can mix them, and yeah, it's easier. And for Android, it's harder. But <laughs> yeah, can, can we also have Swift with C plus plus? Yes. So that's. Actually, a um, great question. Uh, with the new Xcode, we have a C++ binding, uh, or maybe um, let's rephrase it. You, you can use C++, you, you can call C++ function from the Swift. So it's possible. And I hope like in the version 080 of React Native, we will be able to drop the Objective-C and directly call the Swift functions and use C++ and so on. Yeah. Um, so in, in, in a previous life, I wasn't a native iOS developer, I don't know, like 10 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, I, I used Objective-C and then at that time we migrated also to Swift and I found Swift to be so much better and, and cleaner. And I, yeah. to this day, I really like Swift compared like Objective-C, the names and all the brackets and everything. I still got nightmares of that. And I think Swift was just like it just introduced some pretty cool concepts all this this whole stuff of just using a property with dot something so you don't have to say for example color dot red you just say dot red in in many yeah. cases there was just stuff i or the the contract of uh, if let like unwrapping an optional and then using the value afterwards it was just something i i always hoped typescript would get but uh yeah here we are and, and i'm still yeah i agree i also miss it i miss few features that are present in Swift that we are not allowed to use in JavaScript. Uh, I can still recommend the book uh, from Hacking with Swift. I'm sure that you heard about this uh, website. And uh, I think uh, the name of the author is Paul. And he, cre he like created, he wrote a book about Objective-C. It's like the uh, teen book. You can read it like in two days and it will help you a lot with Objective-C. Oh, I'm going to definitely put this in the notes. Yeah, I think it's Paul Hudson. Uh, I think Paul, Paul Hudson is the creator yeah. of ha Hacking with Swift. He has tons of great stuff. And I think a lot is actually free. I think there is like a like a hundred day of days of Swift thing. Uh, and I think you can take most of this actually for free. Um, I don't know if there's anything else like this for, for Kotlin or Java. Have you come across any good resources for that as well? For Kotlin, I think uh, the best resource is Android uh, documentation. Mm -hmm. And for the iOS, uh, it's hard to read iOS documentation slash Apple documentation. Mm -hmm. um, they just generating the documentation from the types and functions in core of uh, like iOS and Swift and so on. Uh, so it's hard to read, but uh, you, you can get used to, uh, to it. You can use ChatGPT to like translate or uh, describe what it does. Um, so it's not that bad. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think they look also some, somewhat outdated. I think they made an update a few years ago, but it still looks not too great. Anyway, um, this has been really great. This has been so insightful. Uh, I think you're uh, awesome, really, the, the writing on your blog and the explanation and uh, that you even went the extra mile to create this uh, code snippet component with blur included just shows how dedicated you are to to helping people and 
Um, I mean, if you show that level of detail and, and understanding at CodeMask, um, I can understand why most of your clients or all of your clients are, are pretty happy with your work. So thank you for everything you've done. Uh, and thanks also for coming onto this podcast. Thank you, Simon, for having me. It was like a great journey. It was a great uh, like uh, experience. Uh, I was stressed at the beginning, but right now I'm just speaking freely. So thank you for oh, the that is so first good. That time. Makes, <laughs> that makes me so happy. Um, to wrap it up, uh, where can people find out more about you or your projects? Where should they go? Uh, they can find uh, more about me on Twitter. I'm trying to like post something every day. They can also follow me on GitHub. Um, yeah, and leave me a star on Unistyles. It keeps motivating me. It's just a simple star, but uh, like uh, I love the feedback. Uh, I love the issues that community is creating for me and reporting every like uh, post in the discussion uh, channel on GitHub. So thank you all for the uh, your involvement, and I hope I will release the Unistarts this year 2.0 version, which is faster with C++. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely putting the links to Twitter, GitHub, and UniStyles, and of course, React Native Crossroads, your blog, into the show notes. And uh, if people want to find out more about me, check out galaxies.dev, where I host all my React Native courses. Um, latest courses at this point, probably the one about Expo modules, which was really an adventure, and I highly enjoyed that course. Uh, probably in the future, also doing another one about bare React Native uh, without Expo and experiencing uh, what Jacek has been through. So uh, I'm looking forward to using Unistyles in the future. I'm looking forward to see what you come up with version two. And I'm really curious if this will, like you never nearly know if something's going to be adopted by the community. I mean, you had a great start, but of course 300 stars is not 10K stars or something that, that, that people would consider. Yeah, this is the default we're gonna use, but I don't see a reason why Unistyles couldn't become that. So all the best for Unistyles. Uh, and again, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye. Bye.